this is uh, this is the monbo and what's really uh, important about the monbo is that well first of all I, this is uh, it it's heavier than the baroque bow it's got more hair at this point i usually make a pun about me not having any hair but i won't get there today uh, and the the end of it is shaped into, with a kind of a right angle and the reason why that exists is that if you press well, how does how do we get more tension in the in in the bow in order to give us a a, a bigger sound or, or a, a very clear articulation or an accent or anything? What we do is we press more on the bow, right? So we kind of take it for granted that we press more, therefore we get more sound, right? But the reason why we 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 what happens is that when you press the bow, the hair stretches because of the way that the the bow bends. Right? And so if the bow was made out of metal, you would not get any different real effect because the, the, the hair wouldn't be able to be stretched. Now, the thing about it is that if you press here, of course, you can see the bow moving up and down, right? And when this happens, it changes the tension of the string. And of course, the force goes into the, the, the string as well. But the best thing about this is that if you press here, the same thing happens, right? And so therefore, you can either press here or you can press here and you get the same effect in the bow. The bow would react in the same way. A Baroque bow is not constructed like that. All right? It has at the tip something uh, that I, I like to think that this looks like a, a very nice gentleman's leather shoe. But it's been described as a duck bill, which I can, it's, can also see. Here we are. This is a nice bit over here. And it's much smaller here and it gets way wider when it gets to the frog. Uh, and this is an unusual frog. This is a frog that you see mostly on a, a gamba rather than on a violin or viola, but nonetheless, it works for us. Uh, and last time they used to clip it in as well without a, a screw over here. But you can only press it here. You can't really do much to press here because it's a much weaker area of the bow. It was not meant to perform that way. What it means is that when you actually play on the string, it will follow this and create a sort of a diminuendo. It will just die away. Of course, if you wanted to sustain a sound, you could, but you'll be forcing this bow to do something it wasn't really intended to do. The natural feel of it is to decay, to disappear at the edge of the bow. There's no weight. You can, when you do your exercises like this, it flies off the, off the side of the instrument. So you've got to be very careful about doing that. So it has all these effects. So the question is, how does this impact the way that we perform? I'm going to tell you about my first lesson with the uh, Baroque bow. And then we're going to look about, uh, think about how we conceive the sound of this instrument, because it is an instrument. I sometimes feel that we kind of forget that you have one instrument, uh, the violin or the viola, but the, the thing in your other hand is also an instrument, you know? And these two instruments are working together. That's the way I, I, I think about it. Uh, and because it's 1.25 a.m. over here in Malaysia, and I'm, I've visited family now, and there are three kids uh, ages six and below right above me, I can't play for you. And so I've recorded something for you. And you get to see uh, what it was like uh, for me to have my first lesson on a Baroque bow, followed by another approach towards learning how uh, to play on a broke bow. So let's have a quick listen to this. My first lesson with a broke bow was quite unusual. I thought that I was going to be taking the bow and the teacher was going to tell me to change my bow grip, use my wrist more, drop the elbow, all these things. She just told me, Start playing. And I was like, start playing. I haven't figured out how to use this thing yet. No, nope. we'll figure it out. It's interesting because then she realized why it was fighting the bow so much. My concept of playing was very different. My concept of music, of Baroque music, was not really suited towards this kind of bow. So previous to this, I was playing for modern bow. I was playing for rich, full sound. That's what all this extra hair is for, right? That's what the curvature of the, uh, the tip of the bow is for in order to be able to press down here as much as here, you know, all that. And I was playing Bach's Brandenburg Concerto number six 
with this kind of sustained sound. And so it sounded a little bit like this. And so if you try and do that with a broke bow, the broke bow is not going to like you very much. Because every time you try and sustain something, the bow will actually get less and less powerful as it gets to the tip. Right? And of course, this is also less hair, it's a lighter bow in general. Trying to make that kind of sound from this kind of bow is something where you and the bow don't see eye to eye and the kind of music that you're trying to produce. So, what's the way to um, adjust for this? Well, it's first to understand the kind of sound that the bow is used to playing. <laughs> So that's one way, starting with the music itself and then seeing how your bow responds to you. And if it's fighting you, well, it may not just be that you're not capable of playing it, but your concept of sound may not be quite what the bow was intended to do. The other thing you can do is to find out what kind of sounds the bow makes quite easily. So this Baroque bow has a tendency to be able to bounce really well. Um, we in the string will call it sort of this on-off thing. It's not sautier precisely, but it's the ability to produce these really nice dancing figures on, uh, on quick notes, even though you're more or less playing on the string. So if you figure out how that sounds and then you apply it to music, that's another way to understand it. Understand the bow first and then apply it in music. So I hope that uh, that was a bit illustrative of, of what we're talking about. Sometimes you approach things from the music itself and you find out about why, when I'm playing something, why is this, this instrument, or if you ever get a chance to play on gut strings, you'll find out that that's a whole new um, a world of, of finding out that a lot of downwards pressure doesn't work, that you have to actually use a lot more bow speed to create bigger sound rather than pressure onto a string because the sound will get just very choked. Uh, on the other hand, you can just experiment with, with, without music, you can just improvise and experiment, just play open strings and faster notes. Uh, then adjust where you're holding your bow, try using your fingers more than your, your, your arm and see whether that works. Once you find out how the bow works, then apply it uh, into a, a composition that you think would maximize that effect. So those are the kind of two ways that you can use an instrument. Same thing would be for a harpsichord. Right? If you don't know how a harpsichord works, then spend time playing scales and see what happens. You may not know that uh, for a harpsichord, strangely enough, you don't use the thumb. You play a lot of scales by and skipping the thumb. So that was a different way of actually playing the instrument. Uh, but hopefully, if you improvise things and you find out that your thumb was getting in the way, then try and think out of the box and just try and play without the thumb and you actually get back to exactly what treatises might say. So that brings us to the end of the first conversation about instruments, about if you ever get a chance to use a baroque bow, if you're a string player, if you ever get a chance to play on a harpsichord, perhaps this will help you build an interpretation based on just how the instrument responds to you um, rather than trying to make the same sound that you're playing on a modern instrument on a, on a historical instrument and somehow hoping that magically that will uh, create an effect.